Hi, you're watching Cooking with Diane. I'm Diane, and today we're going to talk about mushrooms. I wanted to do a video on mushrooms because people seem to have a lot of questions about mushrooms, and I wanted to address some of those common questions people ask me. I'm not going to be talking about really weird kinds of mushrooms or how to find your own mushrooms in a forest. Those are better questions for an actual mycologist. I'm going to be talking to you about the regular old mushrooms you find at the grocery store, how to wash them correctly, how to chop them correctly, and how to cook them correctly. So there's a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right in. I want to start with the way you would buy mushrooms at the store. So if you were to go to the regular old grocery store and buy some mushrooms in the produce aisle, chances are you would get them in something like this. They tend to come in these stupid plastic containers with plastic film on top, and I say that's stupid because what plastic does is it traps moisture and moisture is the enemy of mushrooms. So if you take your mushrooms home like this and you throw them in the fridge for a couple days, you might come back and pull them out of the fridge and go to cook them and find that they're covered in mold or they're kind of like wet and slimy. That's because the plastic has trapped moisture, which has allowed mold to breed on the mushrooms. I've even seen moldy mushrooms on the supermarket shelves. So really check your mushrooms carefully when you're buying them. Make sure there's no white fuzzy stuff on them and that there's no um, condensation happening on the top of the plastic because that's, that's a sign that moisture is collecting. Second, if you're not going to use your mushrooms the day that you buy them, I recommend that you go ahead and take them out of that plastic container and you put them in a paper bag. You don't need to seal the paper bag, just kind of roll it down. This is fine. What this does is it provides enough protection for the mushrooms to not dry out completely, but it's porous enough so that they can breathe and some of that excess moisture can evaporate. So depending on the type of mushroom and how old it was when you bought it, you could store your mushrooms for at least a week like this, if not longer. So now we've taken our mushrooms out of storage and we're about to cook them. I've chosen to show you three different kinds of mushrooms that I see the most at my local grocery store. The first kind is probably the most common kind. These are called cremini mushrooms or baby bella mushrooms. They sometimes go by either name. It's the same thing. Um, they look like mini portobello mushrooms. They're shaped about the same as white button mushrooms, which is another common mushroom you might see at the grocery store. White mushroom, button mushrooms look like this, except they're, they have a white top instead of a brown top. And baby bellas are really great. They're super versatile. They're cheaper than most, mushroom, most other mushrooms. They store for a long time and you can actually wash them. A lot of chefs will tell you never wash mushrooms. This is a type of mushroom you can wash, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. The second kind of mushroom I want to talk about today is shiitake mushrooms. So these are uh, more commonly used in Asian cuisine. Um, they have longer stems and this kind of wide, flat top. Um, they're really delicious. They have this nice chewy texture and they add a lot of flavor to things. The third kind of mushroom, I don't always see it at the grocery store, but depending on the season, um, it's often there. Uh, this is called oyster mushrooms and it's called oyster mushrooms not because they taste like oysters, but because they grow in clusters on the side of a tree, kind of like the clusters of oysters would grow under the sea. So. These are one of my favorite types of mushrooms. I think the texture is really great. I think the flavor is really great. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive than other mushrooms. So you don't really get as much bang for your buck as you do with say cremini mushrooms. So first I wanna show you how to work with each of these mushrooms, how to wash them and chop them down one mushroom at a time. So we're going to start with the creminis, the basics. If you don't work with any other mushrooms right now, I recommend you start with these. They're, again, they're super easy to find. They're available at almost any grocery store and they're cheaper than other mushrooms. This type of mushroom, you might find little clumps of dirt 
hanging out on your mushrooms and sometimes they'll they're dirtier than other times sometimes i get my mushrooms and they don't seem dirty at all other times it's like they were just dug up from the earth right before they got packed so the question is is that actually dirt and can i wash my mushrooms and if so how mushrooms are cultivated in manure that has been sanitized so yes it's dirt it's manure but it's been sanitized. So if you ate it, it probably wouldn't kill you. So if you don't want to wash your mushrooms for whatever reason, I'm going to say you don't have to. If that skeeves you out, I'm going to show you how to wash them responsibly. What you don't want to do is put these mushrooms in a strainer and then just run water over them because the clumps of dirt are just going to get caught in the strainer. So when you dump the mushrooms back out of the strainer onto your cutting board, you're just gonna be dumping the dirt right back onto them. Instead, you wanna put them in a bowl and fill the bowl with cold water. So once the mushrooms are in the water, you'll see they're floating, so you can swish them around a little bit, give them a little massage, get any of those clumps of dirt off the tops. Don't leave them in there too long. The one problem with putting mushrooms in water, and this is why a lot of chefs tell you not to wash mushrooms at all, is that they're going to start to absorb the water. This type of mushroom, baby Bella and Cremini, they're very tightly packed. They don't have any exposed gills, so they're less likely to absorb water than other types of mushrooms. So this is the only type of mushroom you should be washing at all. So once you've swished them around a bit, lift them out of the water, leave all that dirty water behind, and bring them onto your board. At this point, you can pat them dry with a little towel just to get any excess water off of them. If you do choose to wash your mushrooms, never wash them in advance. You wouldn't want to get them wet and then put them back in the fridge because then again, that moisture is going to breed mold and bacteria on your mushrooms. So you always just want to wash them right before you're about to cook them. And I'm going to get rid of the dirty water. Now we're ready to chop our mushrooms. Cremini mushrooms are very easy to chop. You can eat the whole thing. Unless the bottom of the stem looks really gnarly or dried out or super brown for some reason, you can eat the stem. So I just cut the whole thing. I'll put a whole mushroom down on my board. Sometimes it'll sit at an angle just because just because of the way the stem and the cap are shaped. I hold it steady as best I can with my bear claw, and I just cut slices. And just like cutting anything, you can make these slices as thin or as thick as you like. I usually like to cut thin slices because then I can really spread them out in the pan and get as much brown flavor as I can. I cut my mushrooms from the side of the mushroom so you can see the pretty silhouette of the mushroom. If you cut them the other way, then you're going to get some pieces that are just little pieces of stem and other pieces that are round pieces of cap. This way all of my pieces of mushroom look the same. If it's super awkward for you to hold the mushroom, if it's rolling around on you, you can also cut the whole thing in half. That way you have flat sides to put on the board and cut each half of a mus the mushroom at a time. So then you don't get the whole mushroom silhouette, instead you get halves of mushrooms, but who cares? So sometimes it might be a little bit overwhelming when you have a lot of small things to cut instead of one large thing like one onion, but just be methodical about how you do it. So I cut one mushroom at a time and then I get the cut mushroom out of my way so I always have a clear board space to work on and there's not like lots of little sliced mushrooms cluttering up my space. And I keep all of my mushrooms that I'm ready to cut on the left. So there, I am always going in the same direction with each mushroom that I chop. So let me just get through the rest of these. Great, so that's it for my cremini mushrooms. Now they're all in nice little mushroom slices. If I really needed to, I could throw these in the freezer right now, but I always just slice my mushrooms right before I'm about to cook them. 
So these are going to get sauteed with the other mushrooms in just a moment. Next, I want to talk about the shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms, you don't need to wash them. The only place you're probably going to see dirt is on the end of the stem, and we're going to take the stem off anyway. So unlike cremini mushrooms, where the stem is totally edible, shiitake mushrooms, the stem is really tough and woody, so I generally take it off. It's not going to kill you, and I usually save it to put in stock. It's just really chewy and tough, so you don't really want it in your dinner. So holding your knife horizontally, you can just cut off the stems. And I always cut off all the stems first before I cut my mushrooms. If you're feeling a little bit unsure about cutting off the stems with your knife, you can also pull them off with your hands. So I'm going to save these stems for stock because they are going to add great flavor to my stock, but I just don't want them in my mushroom saute. Now that I have just the shiitake caps, I can go ahead and slice them too. And because these are really thin, they're going to lie flat on my board. I could even stack a couple of them up if I wanted to. And same as the cremini mushrooms, I'm just going to slice thin slices. So your shiitake slices should look like little mustaches. Finally, let's talk about our oyster mushrooms. They're grown in wood chips, so sometimes you might see a little bit of wood chips at the bottom of the cluster, and if that's the case, you can just take off that little piece and get rid of it. Otherwise, the stem is totally edible, so you can keep the whole thing. There's no need to just take off the caps. So I like to peel my oyster mushrooms apart, kind of like flower petals and they'll look like this. I used to work at a restaurant where they would batter and fry oyster mushrooms. It was so delicious. So you can leave them whole, or if you're roasting them, they're really good roasted whole. Or if you're putting them in a saute, you might wanna chop them up the same way we chopped up the cremini mushrooms and the shiitake mushrooms, just by slicing them, really any which way. So now I've got my cremini mushrooms, my shiitake mushrooms, and my oyster mushrooms all chopped up and ready to go. Mushrooms are really best cooked in a way that's going to develop brownness on the outside. So either sauteed in a pan or roasted in the oven. They're not quite as good steamed. Mushrooms have a lot of water inside them. And our goal when we're cooking them is to kind of get them to release that water so that their flavor will concentrate and not be watered down. A lot of people say they don't like mushrooms, which makes me really sad because I think mushrooms are fantastic. They're full of vitamins and minerals and protein and vitamin D, and they have amazing savory flavor to add to any dish. And it's possible that some of you that think you don't like mushrooms really only don't like them because you didn't know how to cook them properly, or you've only had improperly cooked mushrooms. If mushrooms aren't browned enough, or if they're not cooked for long enough, they're gonna be kind of soggy and limp and not as flavorful. So come with me over to the stove and I'm gonna show you how I like to cook mushrooms on the stove. So here we are over at my stove. I'm heating up my cast iron skillet. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can absolutely use whatever skillet you have. I recommend a large one so you can really spread out your mushrooms as much as possible. In general, if you're trying to get the mushrooms a little bit brown on the outside, you don't want to use a nonstick skillet because the coating on the nonstick is going to prevent browning. So first I'm getting my skillet really, really hot on high heat. And it takes a couple minutes for cast iron to heat up. So I really just want to give it that time. I want the pan to be hot already when I put the mushrooms in. I also let my pan heat up before I add any fat because if I had my oil or butter heating up together with the pan, it would start smoking before I even put my mushrooms in. So I'm going to wait till right before I put my mushrooms in to put in the butter or oil so it doesn't start smoking. 
I like to cook mushrooms in some kind of fat because it's going to add a lot of flavor. I find that mushrooms really love butter, so I usually cook them in a combination of butter and olive oil. If for some reason you're trying to reduce fat in your diet, you can actually cook mushrooms with nothing in the pan because the mushrooms have all that water inside. So they might start to stick to the pan at first, but then once they release their water, they'll start cooking in their own juices. So my pan's hot, we're gonna add the butter and the olive oil. And I like the combination both for the flavor and also because the olive oil helps protect the butter from burning too quickly. Spread that around. And now I'm gonna put in my mushrooms. So they're kind of crowding the pan now. They're stacked on top of each other a bit. So in an ideal situation, I would actually have them spread out in a single layer in the pan but they are going to cook down quite a bit, so I'm not too worried. Some people will tell you not to add salt when you cook mushrooms, but only to add salt at the end of cooking. The reason for this is because they think that they want to prevent the water coming out of the mushrooms, and salt draws water out of food. In my opinion, I do want the water to come out of the mushrooms, and I want them to brown after all of that water has evaporated. Plus salt will help them develop flavor. So I'm going to add salt right now and sprinkle it all over the mushrooms. So at first they're going to seem like they're absorbing all the oil and they might even start sticking to the pan a little bit. I'm gonna give them a stir to help toss them with all that oil and salt. And then I'm just gonna leave them alone. Mushrooms can take a long cooking time so you should probably give yourself about 10 minutes to cook the mushrooms. So now it's been about five or six minutes. You can see the mushrooms have cooked down quite a bit and they're starting to brown and they're starting to stick to the pan a little bit. So at this point you might think they're done and they would be perfectly good if you took them off the heat at this point. But I like to push it a little bit further because cooking them a little bit more is going to bring out more flavor in them. At this point, if you want to add any garlic or shallots to your pan, do it now. I'm going to add a little minced garlic to my mushrooms just to add a little extra flavor. I didn't add the garlic at the beginning because it would have burned in the amount of time that the mushrooms have, cooked, have been cooking. Other things that are really great to saute with mushrooms are rosemary, thyme, really any kind of herb anything in the onion or garlic family, garlic, shallots, scallions, chives. So now I'm gonna go ahead and say my mushrooms are done. They've been cooking for about 10 minutes. You can see they're a lot darker in color than they were when we started. My garlic's cooked and there's no water at the bottom of the pan. If there was still water in the pan, I would want to keep cooking them. So I'm going to turn off the heat and bring them back into my container. So these are my mushrooms. It's really incredible how much mushrooms cook down and that's something you're going to want to 
keep in mind when you're buying them. This started out as a pound of mushrooms or three packages of mushrooms. And it cooked down to maybe two cups. At this point, you can keep your cooked mushrooms in a covered container in the fridge for a couple days and just keep them around to add to eggs, to salads, to pasta, whatever you want. I'm gonna be adding these mushrooms to some pasta for dinner tonight. So next time you're cooking mushrooms, remember, don't let them stay wet in the fridge for a long time or they'll mold. And cook them longer than you think you need to because it's really gonna help bring out their flavor. Thank you so much for watching Cooking with Diane. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day. Bye.